Hey guys, welcome back to Periodic Surf Coat and welcome back to this SUP build series. This video is going to be a little bit intensive, but don't worry, we're gonna keep it as kind of concise as possible because what we're doing today is getting into the shaping. Now, you might remember that in the last video, we had to still attach the nose and tail blocks to this blank. Now, I went ahead and did that because it is super simple, but basically all we had to do to do that was trim off the nose section and the tail section where the rails didn't terminate and then add a solid block. The way that we got that nice and square was just using a flat piece of wood with sandpaper stuck onto it and then we sanded it until we had a really good glue joint. So those pieces are now attached, which means we can trim them off and get into the shaping process. Now there are two primary tools that will be used for our shaping process. One is a block plane. A block plane, in my opinion, is the most versatile tool you can have when it comes to building wooden surfboards. The second tool is the rasp. Now, you don't necessarily need a rasp, but a nice rasp like this will help in getting all those little uh, flats that we're about to create smoothed out and turned into a nice gentle radius. Now, lastly, in your kit, you will also have a paper template, which is one-to-one, -one, which you can uh, cut out and stick onto something like a piece of plywood, MDF, or even some cardboard will do, and you can cut out the template guide. Now the paper here is actually for a different board, uh, but this is the shape you will be ending up with for the SUP. Now if you look at your board right now, you'll see that it has a crisp 90 degree edge all the way down the bottom edge of the board. And that is not going to do us many favors for maneuverability and controllability. However, that said, we do still want that crisp edge at the tail because it does a few things for us. The crisp 90 degree kind of sharp edges of the surfboard and stand up paddleboard is actually there to do a few things. One of which is to help with maneuverability because it tends to dig into the water more and have more grab, so for actual maneuvers. But number two, and this is the more important thing, is it helps the water slip away from that board, which makes for a faster board and an easier planing board. So a 90 degree edge will have the water kind of just slip off and, and leave the board, whereas a rounded edge creates a lot of surface tension and drag and makes for a slow board, a hard to paddle board, and something that is very difficult to get up on the plane. So at the tail section, it's really important you keep a sharp edge. Now that sharp edge may sound really beneficial for the rest of the board as well, but unfortunately that would be quite wrong to assume because at the middle of the board and also at the nose, if we kept that sharp edge, any time that we rocked on that board, it would just dig in. So we're gonna start rounding out into a gentle radius from about the one third of the board up. And that is gonna do a few things. It's gonna displace the water. So it's actually gonna keep the board up on top. So that water's gonna move out of the way instead of the board dig into it. So the volume and the, the kind of floatiness of the board will stay there. Uh, and it will also mean that it is gonna force the water under the board, but also towards the tail where we need that maneuverability. This theory, we could talk several videos about this. That is just a general rule of thumb to give you an idea of where to kind of go with the board. Let's quickly go over the theory of how we're going to get our edge profiles to match our guide. So this profile here is what we're gonna use as an example. So this up here is the top and this down here is the bottom of the board. So essentially what we're looking for is a nice radius here and here. Currently though, as the board sits, what we're left with is more of a square profile, something closer to this. So as we're using a flat tool, which creates flat spots with its blade, what we're going to have to look at this arc as is a series of flats. So the first thing that we need to remove and create a flat is a nice big one like that. So we're gonna remove a whole heap of material just working on creating a bevel like this one. Once we have formed that bevel, then we're left with two more little points on our arc and they're what we remove next. So we create a flat there and a flat there. So now we're left with one, two, three, four flats. And then oh, the story basically goes on. But what we're starting to do is we're starting to hit that bottom corner with the template here. So if we were trying to get this flat into shape, we're starting to hit a roadblock by the pesky little bottom corner. Now that isn't necessarily an issue now because we can look at this arc and we can get it close to about midway down the board. So if we look at this arc as terminating at this point, well, we've got this flat, so now we know that we can create a flat here and here and still be safe for our profile. So we're gonna be left with something that's a little bit oversized 
but it's close to our end profile. Because once we have most of our radiuses close, but not quite there, we're going to flip the board over, and then we're going to actually bring in the bottom edge to where it has to be. So we have created that flat, and we'll create that flat. So now, when we flip the board over and we're working on the top, we can remove all this excess material that we left there earlier, and basically finalize that shape. So the first thing I am going to do is to mark out our set measurements here. So all of these measurements come from the tail, so it's going to be 100, 700, 1300, etc. We just kind of draw those lines in there, kind of freehand, but just creating a few reference points for us to refer to in the entire shaping process. Now, from there, I also kind of mark a line, and in this case, I just look at how big those radiuses are, roughly, and I kind of just mark a few lines evenly along the edge to show me where not to really go past. So this is more of a stop than anything. And in this case, it's about 45, 50 mil or thereabouts. So you can just use a tape measure and a piece of chalk and put your finger on it like a stop. And you can use that as a pretty good scribe mark on these kind of round corners. With all that kind of marked out, now we can just start looking at our template and bringing in these radiuses. So at the tail, we can see that we want it to basically come down to the edge. And by the time we hit our second mark here, we want it to be a lot gentler. So what I'll do is create a flat along the entire length, because this is always going to be the tightest radius. And then we'll stop and then we'll move forward and continue creating larger flats along the entire board until this profile is looking closer. So I've got my block plan set. And if you're a first time shaper, you might wanna have your plane set a little bit finer than I do. So I have it set pretty aggressive, but that's, uh, that comes with experience and also confidence in what we are creating here. So here you can see what I'm creating is an even flat along the entire edge. And when you're using your plane, if you skew it like I am here, so most of the plane is actually off the board and we're just focusing on the blade, what that will do is create a smaller footprint, which means that the plane will have a tendency to follow the contour of the board rather than try and flatten it out. So instead of using your plane like that, use it on a nice skew and really just use long, even strokes. Now that I'm starting to establish this round over, what I can do is bring in my guide and just kind of eyeball the air gap is nice and even. So here we can see that we've got more gap down the bottom than the top, which was indicate that we need to come in at a shallower angle on this top edge, while this edge is actually pretty good. So he, up until around here is great. So this section just needs another pass to remove that flat that we're creating. Now, we will continue checking that at all of our marks. And we should see that it's basically the same story because all we're doing is creating a flat on top of that flat. With that part removed, we should be able to see that that air gap is starting to really come in. And what we're getting hung up on is this bottom radius. So that there is about where I would take it for our first pass on this top layer. Anyway, with that said, we can see we've got a long ways to go here. So Now one thing that I want you to kind of pay attention to is my body position here. I am down nice and low to the work so I can see the actual chamfers that I'm creating. And I've also got light coming in across this joint so that the shadows that are cast by these these um, kind of flats that we're creating by the corners, I can actually see them and adjust my plane and make sure that I'm kind of getting the right angles. If I'm standing up high and trying to look over this piece, you can't see anything at all. So get down low, look at what you're working on. If it means that you have to bring the workpiece up high by stacking it on a bunch of books, it's worth it because it is better technique and it guarantees that you can actually see what you're working on. So 
Now, of course, this is only side one. We still need to do this on side two before flipping it over. So just like before, we're just going to mark those, uh, those lengths. So we have a, a reference point. So basically looking at this radius, we're not going to touch the tail. 700, we're going to start bringing it in, but it still has a bit of a crispness. But by 1300, it's rounded over and it's probably about 20 mil or just under or just over three quarters of an inch in height. So we're going to go from here to here, just slowly working in a round over. Right, we're just checking. I can see that we're at the right profile, but it's not deep enough by any means. So we'll keep going in. And that looks a lot closer there. That there is pretty damn close. So we'll leave that until we come in for our cleanup passes and we'll move on. That is the underside roughed in on this side. Of course, we still have the other, the other side to go, but we can see that all of our radiuses are basically where they need to be, which is a good sign. So we'll repeat this on the other side get it to be about the same, and then it comes into the fine tuning. All right, so we have the, uh, the shape roughed in now, but this surface that we've left is very rough, uh, obviously because it's only roughed in, but it's also not smooth arcs just yet. It's still that series of flats that we were talking about. So if we look closely with a bit of a raking light, and hopefully as I move some shadows over it, it shows up even more, we can see how the shape is actually very uh, jagged and, and not smooth. So at this stage, we're going to back off our plane and we're going to start really smoothing this out, taking very light passes. And then when it comes to sanding or, or using the rasp, everything is very easy. With the bottom of it all shaped in, you can see we can get our templates in nice and close. And what you can see, hopefully anyway, is that on the bottom here, we have an air gap because it's this corner, this edge I should say, which is stopping our guide from coming in. So now we can actually bring our profiles to their final shape as well. So this guide is very important at this stage to continually check and make sure we don't A, go too far, but B, keep things symmetrical. We want this side to match the other side. So this guide is how we do that. All right, so if we're looking at that, we can see that while it's a little bit flatter on the top section, the actual radius is really good. And uh, to me, that there is good to continue moving forward and getting on with the next section in this build. So we're pretty much there with the shaping, but now we just need to smooth everything out and get everything to look like well, it hasn't been hacked out with a block plan. So now you can miss the rasp step. You don't necessarily need to use a rasp. You can go straight into sandpaper and start fairing things out. But for me, I like the rasp because you can really start to see your progress because the, the scratches that are left with the rasp are really quite a high contrast compared to what's left with sandpaper. And you can see if you've, if you've missed anything, if there's still a flat spot or something like that. So, so with a rasp, you wanna skew, uh, skew the rasp so you have more of the tool on the work surface if you're wanting a flatting, flattening cut or you want it to have minimal tool on the work surface, so a very small amount if you're wanting a rapid stock removal. So for us, we're gonna have the tool skewed at quite a steep angle, and we're just going to come up and down the board and we're going to be ro rocking it to match the curves that we have brought in, and things are gonna start looking good really quick. So here you can see at the nose that we have a pretty rough cut for one, but we also have lots of flats still. 
and uh, you'll quickly see hopefully with this wonderful light that we have here how the rasp can really smooth this out quickly but you can also see the progress. So we just continue that all the way along the top and the bottom and we just get everything smoothed out. Alright, so that is the shaping process. So we'll, we'll sand the entire thing, make it perfect, make it smooth, and that is it. Now, sanding, I don't think, needs to be in this video because, well, we've all sanded something at least once. So we're going to leave it here and we will uh, be done with this SUP in the next video because the next video, we are going to be fiberglassing this as well as installing its hardware. So really close, one more video, one more step. Can't wait to get this thing out in the water because it is coming up really nice.